Welcome back after the break. Uh, good to see that so many of you are already here. Um, so, Benjamin, um, you've become basically the market leader um, of your fields with Urban Sports Club um, by buying up basically all of your competitors. Um, when you look back to five or six years ago when you started, did you imagine it would go down like this? No, definitely not. Um, I, I would be a lie to tell that uh, our plan was right from the beginning to take over most of our competitors. So. That was uh, an opportunity that we saw uh, on our run uh, in the market um, yeah. that would make sense for our model, um, and that's how it developed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why does it make sense? Well, um, several reasons. Um, first of all, the, the model, um, how it works, is we partner up with sports studios, climbing halls, yoga venues, uh, swimming pools, and, and we allow our members to check in at those venues, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, all included in a single membership, and um, those venues, for, for those, it's, it's a new process. So there are people coming who are not originally their members, so it's something to learn, not only for one person, but if you, if you look at larger studios, there are 20, 30 people who need to learn the, the processes. Um, if there are no competitors in the market and they start all approaching those studios, um, they s sooner or later will realize it doesn't really make sense to have four to five different check-in uh, possibilities at the reception desk. Okay, so when you're bigger, it's easier to convince them to get into your program um, yes. instead of doing their own office. Or yeah, when, even on well, top. first of all, if, if you take the competitors out, you, you de definitely have uh, the chance that you, you'll mm -hmm. be one of the two, maybe, yeah. uh, they're going to prioritize at the yeah. check-in. Okay. Uh, did your investors also play a role in this? Because uh, I saw you um, have some of the same investors as, as Flixbus who basically did the same in their market? Uh, not at the beginning, because at the beginning we had different mm -hmm. investors um, who weren't so keen actually now to take over because it's also kind of a distraction. Mm -hmm. It's not really something that works smooth right, right from the beginning. It, uh, it causes a lot of work yeah. on, on, on different ends. Um, but one of our takeovers, when we took over the number two in the market, um, that led to an exchange of our investors, and that, that was the moment when we got Holtzbring Ventures, mm -hmm. um, uh, who are also um, investors at, at Flixbus, when we got them into our board and when we strategically f started to follow on uh, with the consolidation of the market. Mm -hmm. But then again, for the first uh, two to three years, you bootstrapped your company. You took uh, basically no external money. Uh, yeah. Why did you do that? And would you do it again, looking back? Well, um, well, at the beginning, when we bootstrapped, we thought, uh, wouldn't it be really cool to have this great company? We help people to live an active life, uh, to live a healthier life. And um, it's just the two of us who can mm -hmm. decide and, and uh, who can really rule what, what's happening in the company. So we tried to bootstrap, um, and we tried it for quite a while um, until we came to the point that we just don't have enough money to prove the concept, mm -hmm. especially since we're talking about a B2C concept, and, and there are examples out there where people bootstrapped and had a great success, so yeah. don't get me wrong, it's not, that it's not possible, but for us,